Good day, everyone, and welcome to St. Anthony Catholic Church. Today, we are gathered to celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is offered for Andrew Hamelman, John Hamelman, St. Anthony parishioners, volunteers, and visitors, my Shearer family, and the Qui Tran family. Let us take a moment to consciously acknowledge that we are in the presence of God and to ask him to help us to hear what he wants to say to us today. The first reading is a call to conversion and a call to believe in God's ways. The sinner is called to turn from his sinful ways it is a reminder that we do not understand the ways of God in our lives or world. Despite the fact that we may have been huge sinners and have spent most of our lives in a state of indifference to God, he will have mercy on us if we turn from our sinful ways. This, act of, this way of acting is probably unlike how we would behave if we were God. In the second reading, Paul is writing from prison and is not sure whether he will get out alive. But it does not matter because for him, life is Christ and death is gain. If he gets out of prison, that's okay too. It will give him another opportunity to preach the gospel. The bottom line for Paul is to serve Christ and his gospel. Today's gospel is the parable of the landowner and the relentless way he himself goes out to find laborers. His constant willingness to hire the ones who are still standing there and his desire to pay them a full day's wage. Jesus tells us that the kingdom of heaven is like this landowner. God takes the initiative in seeking us out. God chooses us despite our utter unworthiness. And God is lavish in his self-gift to us, always giving us far more than we deserve. Let us pray. O oh God of all goodness, your ways are not our ways. You treat us with a love we could never have deserved. You grant us a salvation we could never have imagined through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. May we always praise your name for its goodness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, Come Now is the Time to Worship, at 553. Okay.
everyone. My brothers and sisters, God in his goodness called to himself to come and worship, to experience his love and mercy. Let us pause for a moment and deflect the ties on our lives when our hearts are closed to the Lord. And, and we, when we are enabled to see and receive the Lord, for these have led us as the Lord for his pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you spoke in parables. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you show us the Father's love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you taught us how to live. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. above your ways, 
and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Said to the four, to his foreman, 
Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those that started about five o'clock came, each received a usual daily wage. And when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last one work for only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, my friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. And if I wish to give this last one the same as you, or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For 20 years, a woman went to the tube, also known as the subway in London. 20 years, not necessarily to go to a location or anywhere. Any idea why she would go to the, the tube for 20 years? No, she's not going exactly to a location. For one particular reason. Be dry? No. London's wet, but I don't think it's that wet. We're not talking about <laughs> anyway, Oregon here. Yeah, it's not as wet as here. <laughs> because she wanted to hear the announcement every single time. Let me see how this goes in British. Mind the no. Mind the gap. Mind the gap. That means stand back, the train is coming. Any reason why she would want to hear that message? You know, every time the train comes, it says, mind the gap. Any idea? No, she's not, she's not that crazy about the, 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 the message itself. Because the voice from it was her husband's voice. He was, he was hired 20 more, more plus years ago to... to uh, to make that announcement and the record of it. So every time the train comes, you hear, mind the gap. <laughs> Stand back, the train is coming. And he was and he was gone 20 years ago. And she wanted to hear his voice so badly. Why did she want to hear his voice so badly? For those of you who have lost someone, I'm sure you can tell me this, Phil. For the same reason I have Sherry's voice on my phone. Yes. Because she, because to hear her voice brings him closer. him closer to her, and she wanted to hear so badly, she missed him so badly that anything to to to, to have a part of her. And one day, as time went on, they decided to get the modernization. They took away his voice, and they replaced it with synthetic computer voice. And she was heartbroken, and so she came to the authorities and said. Can I have my husband's voice back, please, recording? And they heard about it. They said, you're really sorry. I don't know if we can do that because the new system won't allow us to do that. So they thought about it. After they said no to her, they thought and thought and thought. What can we do to help her? Well, they figured at that particular station where she goes at near her house, they made it so that only at that particular station, his voice we played. They call it, you know, in memory of that love is eternal. They want it in keepsake, in memory of him. And that meant a world to him, that, you know, that someone, a small gesture, could mean so much to, to this woman. Because you love, you know, when you love someone so badly, their voice means everything to you. Yeah. And you know, each and every one of us also have a voice that calls us each and every day, and each and every woman. And you know what that voice is? It's God speaks to us. He speaks and he sees us. But I wonder, do we see him? Because he is near to us, but yet we oftentimes fail to recognize in our life. Because oftentimes, you know, we are so bogged down with our pain and suffering. 
that we are unable to hear the Lord speak to us, that I'm here with you through our friends, through our family, through our priests, through, through the teaching of the church, through the sacraments of the church. Because when you think about the word sacraments, those are signs and symbols of God's love. It's like, well, it's more than just the way I said like is inadequate, but I don't use it anyway. It's like, you know, the picture that you carry of your loved ones in your phone. The, the, the mementos that you carry, the necklace or the earrings that your loved one gave to you, that you carry with you wherever you go, the ring that you carry with you. Yes, Phil, yes, the wedding, the wedding ring that you have of your wife that you carry with you everywhere you go. And you'll keep it on to the last day of your life. That no matter where you are, that person is there with you, living through that in memory of them. And it's such an important part of our, because that's what Jesus knows this. Because at the Last Supper, what is the one thing they told the disciple to do? Do this in memory of me. One simple sentence, but means so much. Do this simple gesture. Share this meal of the Last Supper. Use the same words that I use, and I will be there in your midst. Think about it. How many times do you repeat the same sentence or you use the expression of the people you love? And when you use those expressions or those stories, of the, the same story that they share, sometimes word for word, what happens when you share those stories? They bring that person back. That they're there with you. And the same thing in our life when we share these words, these sacred words, Jesus Christ is there with us. And through Him, our loved one is there with us. It's such a sacred, precious moment that often, you know, when we celebrate Mass so much, you know what ha typically happens? We forget yeah. the sacredness of that moment. I love in our sacristy, there's a, there's a little uh, picture, well, a little message from Mother Teresa that says, celebrate your Mass. How do, what does it say, Angela? Do you remember? It says, priest of God, celebrate this Mass as if it were your first Mass, your only Mass, and your last Mass. Yes, your first Mass, only Mass, and last Mass. It's a beautiful message, that, and that, should, that message also apply to not only the priest, to me, but who should it also apply to? Everybody. To every one of us. That this is, you know, this celebrate this Mass if it was your only Mass and last Mass, because guess what happens? Someday it will be yeah. your last Mass. And in preparation that, you know, through this Mass, the, our loved one is here with us. And I noticed, you know, it's kind of funny in our church. You know, when I've been, when this is my sixth year here, you know, I can pretty much tell you, pretty much guarantee where you'll sit, especially those of you who sit by windows, by these particular stained glass windows. I pretty much guarantee. You know why? People oftentimes pick a certain window, a particular place. Yeah, that's where the loved one is. That's where it's dedicated to that family. That family, and their name is the family. The name is there. It's so precious that yeah. When I sit here, I remember where I used to sit oftentimes with my spouse or my family. That God lives here in my in our life. That is so precious, sacred memory. This past week, I had a chance to visit Annie. You know Annie um, Sanchez. She's in terminal cancer, has terminal stage four cancer, and the doctors told her. That Annie, there's 17 percent that you will live to six months. Most likely, you will not pass three months. And I believe that because every week I see her, she's getting worse and worse. Cancer has spread from the liver to her ribs and now to her knees. The next time you, if she she's able to go to church again, she'll probably be on a walker. I said, well, Annie's okay, you know. And anyway, last week her son came from Colorado to uh, to see her for one day, and. And when, when, at that time when he visited her, communion was brought to her. And her son Joe was there with his wife. When the Eucharist was brought in, and as the words of, uh, in memory of me, this is the body of Christ. She looked quickly at her son, and her son was, her hands was not together. And she quickly, and for a moment, all of a sudden it grew quiet and she said, Joe, put your hands together. Stand up straight. 
This is a 42-year-old man. <laughs> what does that tell you? Here's a woman who's dying of terminal cancer, can barely sit up straight. What does that tell you? Still the She's still the boss. This cancer can kill this body, and it will, and it is indeed killing her. But it can't kill the spirit. My love for you as a mom will always remain. It tells you something that you're no matter what. I'm still your mom. I don't care if you're 42 years old. You have two kids, and you have a wife. You're still my my son. I'm just still going to teach you as long as, as much as I can, no matter what. And what does it also tell you about Annie? Her love for the Eucharist. She's recognizing something serious here. I had to laugh because her son just you know, flew a quite a mile, a lot of miles to be here for one day with her. And then here she is telling him to behave. It tells you something about, yes, she loves her son. But who does she also love? Jesus. It's Jesus. She also loved Jesus. And not only did she love Jesus, but in loving Jesus, she also loved you guys very much. She wants to give my regards to you guys. And also she asked me one special request. You know, Father, when I go to Colorado to be my son, he asked me to be with him. And I understand that her heart is torn. That so much she wants to stay with you, stay here, her last days. That's her, her, her dying wish. But she also was torn because she wants to also be with her son, her daughter-in-law, and two grandkids children mm -hmm. and it's such a beautiful message you know that she says yeah father when I pass away please celebrate a memorial mass for me with the people I love and that so that they know that I'm there with them and it tells you something about you know death can destroy this body but death can't destroy our love for one another it can't destroy the love of God and ultimately is that what life is about that we are forever joined with God and joined with others through the mystery of the Eucharist and through this sacred meal. Jesus Christ is with us. And it occurred to me, you know, before she goes, maybe I'll give her a spoon for her funeral. <laughs> Any idea why? Save your spoon. Save your spoon. She knows what that means. That the best is coming. That the Lord, that ultimately, that's what St. Paul talks about today, isn't he? He says, whether in death or in life, I belong to the Lord. That my life is not my own. I'm torn. I want to be with you, Lord. But I also want to be here to serve you on this earth. And, and I just want to acknowledge and invite you to keep that in mind in your life. That your life has such a precious gift. A gift of example. I thought, you know, when Annie moves back, God willing, to Colorado, she'll be the shining example of her son, and her daughter and her two grandson that she the, through the short time that her son was here her son came to me see me the day before he left the airport you know after the mass she said thank you so much for your love and care for her that means so much to me if i could i would love to join your community if i could do it i would want to move here too what does that tell you the impact that you have in her in her life and through her his life that he recognized that there's a need in his life for something greater than himself because guess what everything that she's going through some right now he's going to go through someday the day will come for him his wife and grandchildren someday too as for all of us and the choice to face death is up to who to each and every one of us it's depend upon our faith in Jesus. Because if we believe in Jesus while we're alive, we will surely believe in him on, the, on our last day and knowing that the Lord is there with us. That fear will not overwhelm us. Worries will not overwhelm us because we know our hands, our life is in whose hands? In the Lord's hand. And I just invite you, my brothers and sisters, to keep that in mind today. That God is good and kind in our, in, in our life. That each and every one of us, as we move forward our life, to know that the Lord is there with us in our community, in our faith, through the sacraments. That we too 
or in God's hands, as hopefully we too can be in one other's hands, knowing the love and the mercy is with us this day and all the days of our life. Amen. Amen. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, and maker of heaven and earth, of all the invisible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not me, consubstantial of the Father, through him all things were made, but for our sin and our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was his heart in the birth of Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious fire, he suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day in the corners of his grace. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to see when he will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's way are high above ours, yet our prayer is always heard. For all who proclaim the gospel with their lives, especially teachers and missionaries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who labor in the vineyards of peace, especially national leaders and elected representatives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer and die for their faith, especially Christians in the Middle East. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who strive to end disease and suffering, especially doctors and medical researchers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who gather at this table, especially the sorrowful and the lonely, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who have lost hope, may hope be restored through God's grace and the goodness shown to them by God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, may they experience the fullness of life and love in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our own personal and special intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Generous God, you are near to all who call on you. Hear our prayers and grant what the Spirit bids us to ask. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the preparation, the gift is number 484. What wondrous love is this?
Pray, dearly beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself, was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions of all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as if our end we acclaim. Church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles of all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance of your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be you always. Let us offer each other sign peace. Because the Lord is my shepherd.
years while they were in the hospital. They had one special request. You know what that is? To be next to each other. The wife said why she was there. She felt so lost without her husband. She wanted to hold his hands. So they moved the couple together. And when she held his hands, her husband's hands, she said, boy, what a relief it was. He comforts me by his, by his, you know, by our life together. It comforts me. At this time, I want to ask you to join with me to give a blessing and pray for Shirley and Jim Squire, who's not quite 76 years, but they're getting close there. 66 years. 66. 66. I thought that's what I said. Oh, I'm sorry. Or is that the mother side of you? Gotta correct me. That's okay. You wanna? Yes. They can't get enough of each other. I see. <laughs> you wanna look at each other. Loving, compassionate father. Send your blessing upon your servant here, Shirley and Jim. Fill them with the mystery of your love. That this day and all the days of their life, may you fill with peace, joy, and love. That in doing so, may they share their love with one another and with their children, this community, and all the people they contact. We ask this to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Second Sunday in October, what do we have? The wonderful, amazing, spectacular Knights of Columbus breakfast. This is a breakfast support St. Joseph Catholic Church in Salem. As you may recall, a few weeks ago, they had an arson, a fire that burned down their roof. So for the past, since the fire happened, they've been celebrating Mass in the parking lot. Do you, have, do you know what the, the problem with that is? Probably not this weekend. Not this weekend. That's right. They'll be moving into uh, into the gym, so it's going to be very tight. The church has roughly three thousand five hundred parishioners, so it's going to be a very very tight fit. And so, with that in mind, the Knights of Columbus are raising, uh, doing the breakfast to support and help them. So if you could help out and join us for that wonderful breakfast, because when I think about that church. I think about my experience there, the second year as a priest, I was there for one year. And I remember, you know, it's a struggling parish in downtown Port, I mean, downtown Salem, and the parking lot's an issue. And I thought to myself, boy, what would happen to our community? I was like, oh my gosh, they started a fire in the, in the trash can. And of course I thought, God, I hope that never happens to us. But I thought about the community, the rebuilding that's necessary, and to top it off, the new pastor there was only for there for two months until this happened. So he's got a lot of things on his mind, I'm sure. And after the fire, the, um, the water, the flooding, it flooded the parish office. No office for, for a week, you know. The office telephone wires and everything was down. So they need a lot of help. And so I just invite you to keep that in mind um, and just support them through helping to rebuild the community. Because, you know, the beautiful thing about the Catholic faith is Whatever happens to one church, even if it's more than 100 miles away, it also affects all of us. When you hurt one of them, you hurt all of us. So I just invite you to keep that in mind. Also, join us each um, Wednesday for a wonderful Bible study, Wednesday at 9 p.m. Uh, I mean, Mass at 9 p.m. and Bible study afterward. And of course, admiration and benediction. Join us um, to spend time with the Lord. Also, after Mass Day, we have wonderful, beautiful rosaries. If you like, you feel free to take them home and, uh, and with a little pamphlet, how to pray the rosary. If you never prayed the rosary before, I can't tell you how, what, I'm missing, what you're missing out on. Mm -hmm. The instruction of the mystery of, the, of the, the rosary. I think about the beautiful words of Mary to give you us comfort and joy in life. So I just invite you to, if you've never done so, do so. That's a great gift and a present for you in your life, praying Mary. And if you got extra rosé at home you're not using, feel free to bring it back to us, well, bring it to us so that we can share with others. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great tragedy when you have these rosaries just sitting there, and I believe they're meant to be used, to give praise to God, not to be sitting in the closet somewhere, but to be shared with one another. Let us pray. <laughs> Grace.
we raise up, O oh Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is said to go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, the generous in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with you in the humble day, and that you now the prayers of the heavenly host by the power of God. Cast into hell, Satan, and all evil spirits who come out of the world seeking to ruin us all. Amen. Closing hymn is number 558. Glory and praise to our God. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Yes, sir.